what's good youtube man welcome back to another video man this video is inspired by one of the comments that i received on my last video um the person was just asking me to go a little more deeper um they kind of told me my vlogs were uh, kind of the same and they want a little more information um about like the struggles that i have come across with working in cybersecurity and grc and tech in general so that's what this video is about as you can tell by the title um, before we get started make sure you hit that thumbs up button and like the video this is going to push it out to uh people that may not be subscribed and make sure you subscribe if you want to see more content but further no further ado let's get into this video man welcome back so number one one of the biggest struggles you may run into um getting into grc specifically would be communication across different teams so with me I work in risk, IT risk. So I have to communicate with people that might be in HR, people that might be, um, I work for a school, so uh, it might be professors or people that's not, that's very non-technical. So in that, in this role that I am, I have to be both technical and non-technical because one minute I might be in a meeting with someone uh, from HR that's not very technical and, and in the next meeting I might be with in a meeting with engineers on the DBA side, the database side, or, you know, it, I, I'm exposed to a lot of different teams. So one of the struggles that I do face is one, I always have to upskill myself and make sure that I can communicate with those technical teams. And also I am fit or in a place to communicate with non-technical people. So um, I think that's one of the struggles that you you might face. Um, I want to say it's a very big hurdle to get over, um, but it's something that I definitely had to kind of understand once I got in, inside the role. Um, I didn't really wrap my head around it before I got into uh, cybersecurity because a lot of people tell you like, hey, this is a GRC is a non-technical role. I wouldn't say that. You're not doing a lot of like, coding or configuration type stuff but you do have to understand those things you you do have to un know how to read simple code you do have to know how to automate um tasks like now i don't i don't think it's a non-technical role like yes you might not be super into building up servers and all that stuff but you will have to know what you're talking about when you're dealing with these teams so when they come with a uh, risk of vulnerability you'll know what exactly the risk is or being able to communicate that so um that's struggle number one so struggle number two um and this one i wouldn't say i don't know this one is is a struggle just because um you have to stay up on it so um it's constant change so regulations change um procedures might change policies might change in this role in grc you have to be able to adapt to change the threat landscape might change like it's so much so many things that might change you have to be able to adapt to that change like a framework might <laughs> like like ffiec for example they are no longer going to update their um cybersecurity assessment so you have to find a new one to align with the frameworks that your company use and being able to adapt to that and, and make sure that you're not missing any gaps so my, one of the biggest struggles that you might face within cybersecurity and grc is the ever-changing everything environment <laughs> stuff change and not and it's not to say like yes the main things will be the main things and they'll stay the same but you have to be able to adapt to the changes that are that are happening around you and being able to be self-motivated to learn those things and look them up on your own like you're going to have to do a little bit of research outside of just working outside of your work hours like you have to be a tad bit interested i'm not saying you have to be in love with it and do it 24 7 on your free time you know no but you have you do have to be able to um read up on things and understand them for work you get what i'm saying so yeah 
I think one of the biggest struggles will be um, understanding and getting used to constant change. So, struggle number three will be balancing and juggling business goals or needs with security. So, a lot of times, you might say for me, for example, you might have a risk that is high in security, but it might not be high on the business side to get that to to get the resources attention on that risk. You, you get what I'm saying? So a lot of times you have to know how to kind of bundle security with business needs. So making sure that you understand your company's goals that you work for. What are your company goals? What is the ultimate um, thing that pushes the needle uh, for uh, your company to get stuff done? So that's one of the struggles that I still kind of struggle with is kind of knowing how to package those things. And a lot of your leadership will be the best. That's when you know you have great leadership when they can coach you up on how to um, go about getting certain things remediated or done uh, because they know how to relay it back to the business needs and business goals. Um, So that's one of the struggles you might run into is knowing how to package that and understanding um, the difference from just a security um, vulnerability or understanding where does that fit into uh, the business needs and how can it fit into that. And yes, companies well i can only speak for the companies that i have worked for they take security very seriously but when you ask to take a certain amount of resources to um remediate something or get something done on the security side it's kind of not bringing you that much profit it kind of will be knocked down a little bit but if you know how to package it well and show how it will benefit the company by doing it um it's it's just a whole different ball game you get stuff done very very much faster so um that's the last one is kind of like four and five i'm just gonna put them together because i feel like they bounce off each other um so four would be knowing how to upskill and knowing how to keep what to continue to learn you get what i'm saying because a, grc is considered entry level so you don't want to stay at entry level so understanding where's your next move and understanding how can you get there how can you forge a path from where you are now so uh with me for example um i i noticed my shortcomings in my role um and one of them that i I spoke on earlier uh being able to communicate with different teams and I wasn't as technical as I wanted to be, so I went and got my master's in cloud computing and uh, networking. So I can understand how a lot of these things work, how a lot of these things connect and be able to um, give mitigated controls, recommendations to these teams on how um, things can get remediated or done. Being able to speak the technical, being able to speak more to technical people and understanding it in a deeper level. Um, that's why I went and got my master's in um, cloud computing and um, networking. Um, and the last struggle would be imposter syndrome. So with it being like, if you come in like me and it's your first cybersecurity uh, role, you will deal with imposter syndrome. It's just inevitable. Like you're going to feel like you don't I'm not going to say you're going to feel like you don't belong, but sometimes you do. You you, you like, man, these people are super smart. Um, I don't know a lot of the things that they're saying, or I don't understand a lot that um, is going on right now. But my biggest advice to that is if you feel that way, um, I seen a video that said if you're feeling like you are having imposter syndrome, that means you do belong in that room. But you have the desire to be able to come in that room and add value. Um, and right now in the place that you are, you probably just can't add that value that you want to add. But understand that if you're coming into a new role, 
your voice is kind of one of the most important voices because you're the person that's coming from the outside in. And I can't thank like my team enough because when I came on board as someone new, they made sure to let me know, like, we don't expect you to be an expert at anything. But one thing that we do want you to do is voice when you don't understand something because you might bring up a red flag that someone that the team that's already been here we look at it so much we might overlook that one thing that you might bring up because you're a fresh set of eyes on a lot of the processes we do so asking those questions will only help the team like and help you so um with dealing with imposter syndrome it comes with time and understanding how and where you can add value and continuing to just keep learning keep pushing stopping is never <laughs> uh, the answer so just make sure you just keep pushing forward and know that you do belong in those rooms you just can't add the value that you your heart desires at the moment but once you keep building and building and learning and learning the more value you will add to the team so that's it man i appreciate you guys for um clicking on this video hopefully it made sense hopefully this was helpful to you if it was helpful make sure you hit that thumbs up button and comment down below and let me know um any feedback you, that you guys have with any of my videos um i am super open to feedback you know um that's how this video came about because a comment someone left on one of my videos i read the comments i might not um reply to all of them because i just might not get to it but i do like it and uh, I do read them so make sure you hit that like button if you like the video if you like the channels and you wait no more videos make sure you hit that subscribe button but we out